So in this video, we're going to go over some notation in mathematics. So we've learned what subscripts are, and let's use them to our advantage. Let's say that we have five puppies. And I'm going to name them D underscore one, subscript one, D two, D three, D four, D five. Let's say that D is a measurement of how cute this dog is. So D is defined as cuteness. And so D I is cuteness of puppy i. And I want to take the sum of all the cuteness for these five dogs. So in this case, the sum, of course, is d1 plus d2 plus d3 plus d4 plus d5. Not too bad. Now let's say we had a hundred puppies. And again, they'll be named D underscore one all the way up to a hundred. But darn it, I don't want to write out a hundred terms here. So one way that you very frequently see in mathematics is a dot, dot, dot. So the sum for a hundred puppies, we could write as D one, plus D2 plus, and I'm just gonna do dots, plus DN. And then for us, N is the number, and so N equals 100. So you will very frequently see this. So you'll see a couple terms at the beginning, you notice the pattern right away, you'll see dots, and then we assume this goes up to DN. So I could write this for the five puppies as D1 plus D2 plus dot 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 plus D5. Although this didn't save me that much writing because I only cut out D3 and D4. But for 100, I definitely save a lot. And there's actually an even shorter way to write this sum. And this is where we get into sum notation. So to do this, we're going to use the squiggly line here, which is known as capital sigma in the Greek alphabet. So I encourage you to go and Google the Greek alphabet. Did I spell alphabet right? I'm a terrible speller. And you'll see that this is a capital sigma, a lowercase sigma looks like this, and there's a whole bunch of other letters in the Greek alphabet that are typically used in mathematics just because it looks different. So at some point, someone decided that this sigma is going to be used to mean sum. So I'm going to say sum here. And this is going to be equivalent to sigma. And when I do sigma, I equals 1 n of d i. So what, is, what does all of this mean? This means that I'm going to take the sum of all the d's starting with d1 up to d n. n is equal to 100. So writing this out, it's exactly like this sum here d1 plus d2 plus dot 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 plus dn. For the first example we have, the sum would be equal to the sum from 1 to 5 of di, which equals d1 plus d2 plus d3 
plus d4 plus d5. So this sigma will almost always have an i or some other letter equals to some integer. These always have to be integers. And then at the top, it will either be a variable, we have n, or it will be an integer, a 5. Now note, if you're going to use this sigma notation, it must be true that you have a variable d for all of i's from 1 to n. Now this will not work if we were missing a d3, for example. So let's say we only had d1, d2, and d4. So we don't have a d3. I can't do this anymore. I can't use the sigma notation. It just does not work. There's no way I can write d equals 1 to d equals 4, but no d3? Eh, it's junk. It doesn't work. And these also must always be integers. I can't have 0.5s. I can't have neg... Oh, I guess I could have negative numbers, but always integers. If I had d1.5, d2.7, then some notation is not going to work. So some notation, sigma from i1 up to i equals n of d i is equal to this here. That's it. Thank you.